Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Ohio Huntsman Podcast. And this week, the topic is deer drives. So, love them or hate them, they are a legal means of pursuing deer in Ohio. And so we're going to talk about them today. We, let me stop. We've got big announcements. Before we get right into the topic, we've got big things to tell you guys about. So, we have shirts. I don't know if you saw the announcement on Facebook and Instagram, but if you didn't, you should be following us on Facebook and Instagram, Ohio Huntsman on Facebook, Ohio Huntsman Podcast on Instagram. That way you can stay up to date with all of this exciting news. But we have shirts. They will make your muscles look bigger, and there's a good chance that they will become your lucky shirt and you'll shoot a big giant buck wearing them. So yeah, they make you shoot straighter. Yes. Oh, like a perfect reason. We had that woven into the fabric. So you should definitely buy one. Proceeds are going to help keep the lights on, as they say. Pay for podcast hosting, that sort of thing. Keep the show going. So I don't know. I'm pretty happy with them. I think they're, I think they're, they're pretty cool. turned out good, and yeah. you'll have to uh, check them out. You can... You can find them on our on our social pages. You'll find links to them there. We probably can throw those links in the show notes for this too. Or... Yes, yes, good note. Or I will make a note of that. Um, the other announcement, and this is a big one. It's not live yet, but it will be going live soon. We are doing a giveaway, our first giveaway, and we're going to be giving away a trail camera. I know you're excited. I'm pretty excited. Jeff, I can't win, but I'm, I'm still excited. excited. I'm excited. Yeah, we can't win. I mean, I guess we could decide not to give it away, but right. that would not be very... <laughs> that would defeat the whole purpose. Yeah. You can just go to the store and buy one. <laughs> right. So, stay tuned. Again, follow us on social, Ohio Huntsman, Facebook and Instagram. That's where you're going to find the details of this, in, of this Instagram, of this giveaway. We're giving away a stealth cam. It comes with all the fixings, so it's got your SD card reader. It's got your batteries. Pretty sure it had an SD, SD card. SD card. And an SD card. I knew I was forgetting something. Yeah. An SD card. So it's plug and play, ready to rock and roll. I use an, uh, I've got two stealth cameras. Jacob, you've I got one. one. I've had good luck with them. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing a giveaway. So... Like I said, stay tuned for that. We are going to be announcing that this week. It won't be live when this episode goes live because we've been busy hunting. Uh, so hopefully you can understand that. But it'll be live soon, so stay tuned. Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming, Deer Drives. Well, hold on. I have another announcement. Oh, a surprise a announcement. bonus announcement. No one knows about this announcement. Um, there is one of us here at the table who has a birthday that happens to fall very close to when we're recording this. Um, so we won't say how old he is, but I did get him a little something. Oh. And that's what's in my box that you asked about earlier that was a surprise. Oh, okay. So you can open your present. Part of it broke on the shipping. I didn't include that part. Um, the broken part? I didn't include the broken part. I'll get that to you later. But you can you open. Guys hear that? That's my present. The uh, remainder of it, it's just a little here and there. I didn't know what to get you, so I just got on the Amazon and found some stuff. Okay, let me see here. So the first thing I'm pulling out, awesome. This is a copy of the Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. So we've uh, we've quoted. Aldo Leopold on this podcast before. So this, and I have not read this book yet. I've read quotes and, you know, excerpts from it, but I've not read the book. So thank you. You're welcome. So we'll set that aside. Next. Aha. This I saw when we is, were, oh, you can tell yeah. what it is first. This is a set of camo gloves with a leather palm, thin camo gloves, mechanics gloves, with a leather palm, and uh, 
Jacob, you can chime in here. When we were down for our rut weekend at the cabin bow hunting, I saw his uh, gloves were not of a camouflage pattern. They yeah. were just like yellow and black mechanics gloves. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that doesn't fit. I keep it real classy. <laughs> <laughs> so I came across these, and I was like, oh, these are perfect. So, And then there there was something else. It was a, I guess I can tell you what it is. It doesn't matter. But it was a uh, coffee mug. Mm. And it came shattered, so that's why you didn't get it wow. today. Um, but on it, it said, I love my wife in big letters. But then, like, under I love, it said, like, I love when my wife lets me go hunting. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, as soon as Amazon good. replaces that, I'll get that It'll to be you. all the way. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yep, no and problem. I didn't open it on the show, but Jeff also got me a birthday present. He showed up here today. And on time. On time. Yeah, well. And uh, it's a pen, a new pen, except the, I guess you call it the barrel part of the pen, the long part I, of the I pen. I think it's called the barrel. The barrel? Yeah. Is made of uh, bullet casings. Are these real? Is this real brass bullet casings? Yes. I think it is because the one has a dent in it right like here. It. Like yeah. It was yeah. A, yeah, they're 300. Okay. Win. 300 Win Mag bullet yeah. casings turned into a pen. So that's what I'm jotting down notes with right now. So I'm a lucky birthday boy. Thank you, guys. Not a problem. Yeah. So. Now we can get to the deer drives. Now we can get to the deer drives. So, like I said before, love them or hate them, there's a, you know, I guess to take a step back, we want to be, I don't know how to, inclusive right if it's a legal means to pursue deer or any game for that matter have at it man we're i hope you'll never hear us hating on somebody for doing something a certain way that maybe we don't do or you know there's too many people in the hunting world that want to divide the hunting community compound bow versus crossbow crossbow traditional bow versus right. compound you know like gun hunter versus archery hunt it, we don't need any of that. Right. Yeah. Now, even We're now, all... even now it's shotgun versus the straight walled cartridge. Right. right. It's just yeah, all it's, silly, man. We're right. on the same team here. So that being said, we're talking about deer drives. Deer drives are, can be an effective way to pursue deer, especially if you're, if you're looking for a fill in the freezer kind of outing, great way to, to shoot deer, get some deer in the freezer, Feed the family. Also, if you're looking for more of a community style That's hunting, what I was just you know, going to social say, yes. hunting. It takes hunting that is normally a solitary experience until you get back to camp and tell all your buddies what you saw or what happened and turns it into a group affair, a group event, right? You got it's a teamwork thing. We're all working together. And I know when we do drives, right, we all split. <coughs> excuse me, we all split the meat up when we're done because we all helped, we all participated, right. we all did our part. You got buddies right there to help you drag deer at that point. And so it can be a lot of fun if done right and done safely. So do one of you guys want to talk about the basic concept of a deer drive for people that don't know, that have never done one? What's, what's the, uh, how it goes? Sure. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, so deer drive, how to, I mean, there's all kinds of different techniques or I'd say to start, like pretend you got a square block of timber, right? Yeah. To simple, simplest form, right? You got okay. a square block of woods. So yeah, say you got a square block of woods. We'll say it. You know, I mean, just for numbers sake, say you got a hundred acre square, literally a square. Um, basically you have standers or gunmen or shooters or yeah, whatever, you different, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then you have drivers, pushers, you know, nudgers. There's different, again, you can call them anything you want. Um, but basically you put, um, basically if you have a square, you put your standers assuming, I mean, where we, where we do our deer drives, there's terrain involved. Right. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, but in general, you have your, standers along the south side of the square and then your drivers or pushers go hopefully they don't have to walk through the woods hopefully there's another access route a road they can drop in from the north side 
and basically work north to south through the woods, um, pushing the deer, bumping the deer towards the standers. And it, it doesn't need to be north and south. No, the deer, the deer not. do not care about the directions. Yeah. No, it's just I'm just trying one to side paint a, and the other. Right. I'm yeah. trying to paint a picture. Yes. But yeah, that the deer have no sense of direction in that sense. Um, and we'll get into some details of maybe better ways. I mean, the wind plays into it. If you can use the wind to your advantage, that's beneficial. Um, in this case, it's kind of the opposite of traditional hunting. You kind of want the wind to blow your scent into the woods because it helps bump or push the deer if you're a driver. Right. So, yeah. So let's get in. So, so that's but the basic concept, basic concept right? Concept you're, you've got you guys that are going to go in, kind of sneak into a spot, kind of in a line, if you will, and post up next to a tree or, or something. And then you've got guys that are going to come from the opposite direction, walking through the woods, trying to bump deer toward where the standers are waiting and hopefully be able to get a, a shot at the deer as they are trying to get away from the hunters coming the other direction. So you mentioned the wind. You want your, if, if you can arrange it this way, now property boundaries, if it's private property, you know, these things all play into it. But ideally, the deer don't know the standers are there. So you've got the wind at your back as a driver or a pusher. So your wind is blowing where you're walking into where you're walking out ahead of you. Your wind is blowing, your scent is blowing out ahead of you and nudging those deer out of there. The goal is not for them to come busting out of there a million miles an hour. Right. Sometimes it happens. But if you can nudge the deer to where they're... They know there's something coming. They're just kind of getting out of there. That way the standers can get a nice ethical shot at these deer. They're not running 100 miles an hour. And you can get good, clean, effective kills on these deer. So then the next level, Jeff, do you want to talk about terrain and how it plays into it? That's, that's a big one and a big variable if you're hunting in an area with terrain. Yeah, um, terrain does affect uh, the way that you're going to do a drive um, pretty largely. Um, deer do not like to run over ridge tops. They want to run, stay in the... Like on, if you think of an elevation line, a topo line, right? They're, they yeah. kind of want to follow... They want to kind of. They want to follow the line along. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, most people prefer to drive downhill you know because the deer want to run downhill there is a you know probably 10 percent of drivers that you know people that do drives that swear you need to drive them uphill because then the deer are going to stop they're going to be tired when they get to the top of the hill and stop hmm. that's another uh you know uh subset of drivers um but generally the way that i've done drives we've done drives it's typically downhill because it's easier for the people that are walking and the deer just tend to, they want to take the path of least resistance. And I would say it's safer, safer right? I'm thinking yeah. as you, as you've said that if you're, if your drivers are pushing uphill, your standards are at the top of the hill and are either shooting, shooting downhill. downhill or they're shooting over the heads of your, right, your yeah. pushers, your drivers, which just feels all bad. Whereas if right. you're pushing them downhill, you're shooting into the hills. I mean, the guys might be up above you coming down the hill, but you're shooting into the hillside. Right. In general. Yeah. In, in most yeah. cases. Yeah. So, but yeah, keep going. If you, do you have more on terrain and how it affects or how it should be factored into a deer drive? Well, also, I mean, not so much terrain, but deer behavior, you know, if, yeah. if the bedding area is on, one side of the woods and open timbers on the other, you're not going to want to set the drivers up in the bedding and have the people drive the open timber. The deer aren't going to be in the open timber. They're going to be hanging out in the bedding. Right. So you want the drivers to go into the thick stuff with that the deer that's going to hold the deer and that's going to, you know, a lot of times in bedding areas, there's not much for shot opportunities. Right. So you kind of want to push the deer to where it's easiest to kill them. Yeah. You know, you have your best shots, your safest shots. The other thing I would say 
with, I don't know if it's terrain, <coughs> excuse me, terrain per se, but maybe terrain features in that, like, boundaries rivers yes. if there's a river that they're, they're you know if it's a little creek they, they'll just cross it but if, if you're talking a river where it's they, it may change their direction right or there's some kind of a, a a sharp drop off a cliff edge or something that or if you if it's an area that you hunt commonly and you know that like this is a deer highway right here you can bet that the deer know that that's there and they're going to use it as an escape route there's a reason right. there's a a cow path of deer tracks through right. here is that deer right. funnel through here. Yeah. And another thing to pay attention to is, uh, like saddles or, uh, places where the deer like to go up over hilltops. Right. Because I've been involved with a drive that we did for a few years and the drivers are saying we jumped deer. They ran straight towards the standards. Where did they go? Right. And you know, we, eventually figured out that there was a little saddle in the hill where the deer were. They were going down, but before they ever got to the standers, they were going back up and over the ridge top. Squirt up and over, yeah. <clears throat> Once we figured that out, that became a much more successful drive. Yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of that's that brings up another good point is you know, doing this drive over years like uh, a lot of times these things are sort of like traditional, right? This is, we've done this for years and years and, and we've refined this over years and we've figured out how this works. Now that's not to say that things, you know, the woods don't change, right? The woods mature. And so the deer are moving through there differently and, and things shouldn't be updated, but you can refine just because it didn't work the first time. Doesn't mean that it doesn't work, right? It, right. Maybe they, the deer just weren't in there based on the time of year that you're doing it. Or, like you said, they they squirt it out a different way, and you need to refine your setup, mm-hmm. do something a little different. So that's the basic overview, right? We talked about the basics of it, how the wind plays into it, and terrain features. Is there anything else we need to talk about with drives? Anything else we want to cover? Well... We should talk about safety a yeah, little yes. bit, like really Good get idea. into the safety of this because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble doing deer drives safety wise. Yeah. Um, the standers should absolutely know where the drivers are coming from, right? What direction, you know, they're coming from this direction. I can't shoot this way. Right. Right. Um, yeah. As a stander, as soon as I get on stand, I inventory you know, because we know we've been doing most of our drives, we've been doing them for years. Um, so you know where the drivers come through. And as w- soon as I get on stand, I pick my tree. I visually look. One's coming here, a driver's coming here, and a driver's coming here. Right. So sort these of orient are my, yourself. Right. right. So I orient myself and I say, you know, just to use kind of so we can paint a picture. It's like, okay, so from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, I'm okay. From 11 to 1, no, cannot no shoot there. Yep. There's going to be someone walking right towards me. Yeah. You know, and I just Whether picture that. Whether you see that. orange or not, right. don't send bullets that way. Right. And I pick trees as boundaries. So, because, you know, if a deer's running, you get, you throw your gun up and it's almost like your wing shoot and duck, you know. I mean, a deer's coming through. Right. So, it's all happens fast sometimes. So, I pick, you know, a big tree. If I'm swinging chasing down it you know trying to get a deer in sight and i come across this tree i know that's my drop point yep absolutely not i can't go any further you know so it's just and you gotta i mean it's important i think to know who you're hunting with you gotta trust the guys you're hunting with um yep i mean that because at the end of the day you are everyone has firearms yep I mean, yeah. another thing uh You know, deer drives are typically done with firearms during gun season. Um, That's not to say that you can't do it during bow season. You can do it. Um, Typically, the drivers need to go a little slower, be a little bit more cautious about how quickly they're pushing those deer out. Um, But it can be done. But that brings me into my next point, and that's even, you know, with uh, bow season, you don't need to wear blaze orange by law. But if you're doing a deer drive in bow season, 
put the blaze orange on because it it's all about safety. Yeah. Also, I really prefer to have an orange hat, blaze orange hat, because yep. if you're coming up over a hill, you know the first thing to crest that hill is your head. And if you're wearing a camo hat, that could potentially look like, you know, a piece of a deer. Yeah. And where, or maybe there's a deer, you know, in front of the person and you're coming up cresting the hill behind it and they, they can't pick out the camo hat. Right. You know, but if it's blaze orange, they can see, oh, hey, there's someone just right over top that hill. I can't shoot. Right. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, we, I don't have the exact square inch requirement for the state of Ohio for blaze orange. Um, but I do know that we way overdo the blaze orange. Yeah. Um, it's just, we hunt public land. There's a lot of people in the woods. Um, we are proponents for wearing a lot of orange. Yep. Um, deer do not see color like we do. Um, especially the reds and oranges and that kind of stuff. It's been proven time and time again. Yep. It is not, you're at no disadvantage to wear an orange jumpsuit. Uh, I mean, especially when a deer is a hundred yards away, you know, during a firearm season, it's not, Yep. they're picking up movement, not color. Yeah. So we wear a lot of orange when we're in I the woods. I think pretty much all of us at least wear a full orange jacket and an orange hat. And, you know, some of us even, I know I've at, at points in my life worn a full orange jumpsuit coverall, uh, completely orange so you know like we said the safety is a big one and you know you can't really overdo it with the blaze orange doing deer drives yeah um another uh interesting safety issue that sometimes people don't think about is uh if there's a deer highway coming through you know like this is the path that the deer run don't stand in that path <laughs> because you're not going to get very good shot opportunities because the deer right. are going to be coming be straight at you. Yep. And if they're really spooked, they will run you over. I have seen it happen. Those deer, you know, they're coming so fast. This is their escape route. Right. And they don't expect you to be there and they'll run you over. Yep. And getting hit by a deer going full bore is not a fun experience, (laughs) you know? So do you have a personal experience with this? No, I, I do not, but I have a, I've watched a young kid get bowled over. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. So yeah, good safety tip there. Don't want to get run over by deer. Yeah, I guess. All right. Anything else on deer drives? I think we, we kind of covered it pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of nuances yeah. and things that you could, you know, you could spend a lot of time talking about and, you know, laying out a deer drive is kind of a learned art. You got to know the terrain, know the way the deer sort of funnel through there. But I guess another thing we could kind of touch on is your driver's in most situations you want to try and walk the same speed through the woods Um, again that's kind of a learned thing as to how fast to walk through the woods how much noise to make versus you know but in general you don't want one driver getting way out ahead of the rest of them because that allows the deer to then skirt off to the side and circle back around yep Um, in some cases that gives your driver shots Um, which again, depending on your terrain and your situation, um, where we do drives is down in Southern Ohio, where there's a lot of elevation nuances. Um, our drivers absolutely carry guns and sometimes kill the most deer, the people actually walking through the woods. Um, you know, in some situations, if you're walking, you know, a flat farm field and you're just beaten through, you know, a bedding area, maybe not beneficial for your driver to carry a gun. Because right. you're not going to have shot anyhow. Right. Another thing is this year, there's probably going to be a lot of standing corn during gun season this year in Ohio. And cornfields are a good thing to drive, you know, so. Why is that? Why is there a lot of corn left, right? Do you know? Is it uh, just because it's been too wet? I think it's got to be the moisture. Or? They just yeah. can't get I, it off. Yeah. I talked to a farmer, and uh, what he said was 
that the moisture of the grains isn't the problem. It's the fields are so wet that they can't get the combine get in. their equipment in their equipment in there without damaging the fields. I'd believe it because I mean you guys saw my yard is mush right now. Yeah. But uh, the other thing that I thought of while we were talking about that is if you're looking for, you know, you're thinking, oh, deer drive sounds cool, sounds like it would be fun. I'm not really sure how to, when to do it. Jeff mentioned, you know, you can do it with archery, but muzzleloader is a great time to do deer drives for two reasons. One, it's typically freezing cold, and so if you're up walking, walking. around, you're not going to sit out there and freeze, and the standards are only there for you know, maybe an hour tops, depending on how far of a walk the the drivers have to get to where they need to start the drive. But the other reason is you got one shot. So the safety factor is better, right? It's You're not going to be bang, 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 you know, just throwing lead around. Unless you're Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did a deer drive muzzle loader a couple of years ago, and Jeff managed to get three or four shots off in a pretty short period of time. I probably got four shots off and it was probably only two minutes. It was, I was, it was impressed. Yeah. It was pretty quick. And it, it was, I would have been more impressed if you just sh- killed a bunch of deer, right, but right. you uh, scared him back Jason's way though. He claims this, he claims he had snow in his sights. That's was uh, why he we, wasn't hitting anything. We started doing this drive and we got a heavy, heavy snow come out of, nowhere yeah i mean we were covered up in snow i mean you were shaking the snow off yourself so you weren't so you could so so the driver or the yeah so the drivers could see your blaze orange yeah you weren't just a snowman and i got i didn't notice but snow had fallen on my rear sight and i didn't notice so i was had snow in there and couldn't hit the broad side of a barn yeah but he did reload pretty quick right and that, that's what it's really about. That's right, right, right. How fast you can reload. Right. And it made for a good story, so. Yeah. Right. But I guess the kind of just quick story on that, too. That same drive, one year we were very successful, had deer up running everywhere. Um, that year was a little warmer, and there is a creek river. I don't know. I guess I'd call it a creek, but it's deep and wide at points where the deer don't want to cross it unless right. they have to. Um, it was not frozen over, and we had much more success because it, funneled the deer tighter the next year it was super cold frozen we didn't see a deer and i think that's because the deer could cross back and forth across that creek could be around us i mean it so like we said with terrain features i mean in that case we lost a big boundary by that that creek not being frozen the Uh, other nice thing about muzzleloader is there's typically snow on the ground and so you as you're especially as a driver you can see oh these are fresh tracks there's probably deer out ahead of me and so that just kind of gives you another little advantage i guess right and also if as a driver if you kick up deer you can see and then the the standers don't ever see them you can find out where that deer went right right. and next time you can put someone there yeah because if the deer find a safe way to get out they'll do it again yep all right yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's everything. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess another real quick little um, note. I guess we noted um, the Stephen Ranella book in the past, the um, complete guide to hunting butchering. Um, the second edition, maybe it's the I first. Think, I don't know. Whichever one is whichever the big one's game the big edition. game one. Yeah. Um, they do cover deer drives in there. Um, and they've got pictures and, they got it's, pictures yeah. and stuff. So if you want to, if you happen to have bought that book, um, you can take a look at that. That'll kind of give you some um, kind of pictures to see kind of, they have some arrows drawn and, you know, X marks the spot. This is where the standards would be. And this is where the drivers would kind of work their way through um, just to kind of give you a visual if, in case you've never done it. Or, I mean, we kind of take for advantage. We were raised doing deer drives. Yeah. So right. It's, right. And this is how deer drives are done in Ohio, um, you know, in, in the South, they have a little bit of a different tradition that's completely illegal in Ohio, which is dogs. Right. In yeah. the South, it's that's their tradition is yep. deer drives with dogs, but that is a 
legal practice in Ohio. So that's a completely different story. Yeah. But yeah, I think that just about covers it. All right. Well, like we said, buy a shirt. You'll love it. Uh, stay tuned for our giveaway where we're, you know, hopefully you'll be the lucky winner and you'll have a nice new trail camera. And you're going to find out about all that stuff on our social platforms, which again are Ohio Huntsman on Facebook, Ohio Huntsman Podcast on Instagram. And the other thing I forgot to mention is another way you can help support the show is by listening to the show on the Radio Public app. So the links that I'll be posting to the show will be to the Radio Public app. That just is a is a we've sort of partnered with them as a way for us to make a little bit of ad money from the show they have the flexibility to put little ad clips on the front of the show and will again help us help support the show pay for podcast hosting pay for microphones that kind of thing so that's another way if you're looking for a way to to support the show listen to the show through the radio public platform the app there it's a it's an itunes and android app and the links will take you if you download the app the links will take you you know it'll open the app and you can play it right from there you can also listen online so that would also be helpful and that being said i think we are gonna shut this one off so thanks for listening